Grand Rising, um, I just got some really heartbreaking news and I wanted to come to you guys to talk about it and to, we need to share as much as possible. Um, there was a diasporan woman here, or a woman from the diaspora, how you want to look at it. I met her literally just like a month or so ago. Uh, maybe more and then I think I saw her about two weeks maybe two to three weeks ago so my better maybe at least more than a month ago but saw her at least two weeks two to three weeks ago and it's bothering me to find out that she was discovered murdered behind her home buried behind her home and supposedly it happened by maybe a partner that she chose or someone that was close enough to her um, when I got the news, I literally, my, my chest has been hurting. Um, as you guys know, I've been going through a lot here and I'm not talking about small little, you know, stuff. I'm from the hood. I grew up in the hood. So growing up in the hood prepares you for a lot of shit. Not kidding. Even growing up in the hood, you're not, you're not prepared for the fuckery here. You're just, it's on a different level of stupid and it's like I said it's really breaking my heart um and I saw a, I, I can't remember the sister's name if it was TikTok or one of those you know how we pass around all these different videos it just goes and comes but she talked a bit about how we've normalized poverty and feel free to put your 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 uh your 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 video speed on two times because sometimes I slow down and sometimes I talk really fast um but essentially she was talking about how people have normalized poverty and I've, I've said that a long time ago so I will re share some of the things about me because it, it makes this more poignant to those who get it I mean this is really bothering me yo I grew up in foster care and group homes I left my mom when I was nine and I didn't age out of the system I aged out of the system when I turned 18 and had graduated from high school my mother was a crack addict a hardcore crack at it and my dad was not around because he had his own family I literally have worked my ass off not kidding I've worked my ass off and I know poverty better than most people but because of the way I look most people will not ever have an idea of that and so that's why I said I would share this with you guys because we need to have this we need to have this talk because clearly we have this romanticized idea of when we, when I don't use romanticized, I'm being sarcastic and bringing awareness to this idea that because we see someone that looks well kept and well put together, etc., we make the assumption, not me, but average people will make the assumption that one, I'm spoiled and then I've been well taken care of by random whatever. They have no fucking idea how hard I've had to work. You know, one of the really messed up things is when you grow up in the black community and you're a nerd, you get bullied. <laughs> and I don't mean small, you get bullied. And I, that was me. So part of my challenge growing up also was because my mom was such a hardcore crack addict. My mom sold our food stamps. My mom literally was one of them. She sold our food stamps and I had to go to my neighbors to beg for food. And Chloe, who lived next door to me, I grew up in West Oakland. And this old lady, she was like mulatto, lived next door to us. And I used to have to go and beg her for food. And as a child, you, I think even then I had a little bit of pride. I would go and ask her to borrow eggs or borrow this or borrow that. And she was like, get your little black ass in here. You know, come on in here, eat. Because she knew what my mom was doing. She knew what my mom was doing. I'm sorry, y'all. But I'm going to post this video anyway. Because people need to hear this shit. I grew up impoverished like nobody would ever believe. And what's really crazy is because when people see me now, they have no idea how hard I've had to work to get to where I'm at. And I did it not being on my back. I did it without being on my back. So to get here to a place like Ghana and other countries I go to, I meet so many different type of people whose lives are, they're literally doing better than me, but somehow I owe them something. So fade out, fade in. I'm looking at these people who have family homes. 
not meeting people who haven't had jobs in years, but yet their belly isn't empty. Let that sink in. Haven't had jobs in years, but their belly is never empty and they have a roof over your head, their heads. Meanwhile, I'm here and getting bent over ass right damn near every time I go out to get anything. Because people assume that I have it. This O'Bruni money shit don't finish. This O'Bruni this, O'Bruni that. This is not fucking funny. And we've had too many people come in here dying and getting murdered suspiciously. All for this money, this money grab that people somehow think we have just tons of money. And supposedly this is their just just finished building her house and that seems to be the issue is once you build your house get your land and build your house suddenly you mysteriously end up dead mysteriously but like i said these people are the same folks that's out here robbing and killing us are the same ones that got family homes that they have something to eat have a roof over their head always whether they're working or not they're being taken care of and fed some way somehow but you're jacking and killing people who've come see so me and my brother we was talking about and i would do i was going to do a separate video and i made a comment about how much is enough you literally got people coming here to ghana building schools building roads getting access creating access to water opening uh creating these ngos to to give funding for school children uh what do you call it health fairs when i say there's so much giving it's ridiculous but what do we get in return what protections do we have? Hmm? So this is something that needs to be discussed. We have nothing coming in. There's no reciprocity. So this is why I post this question to the community. You got all these people talking about, oh, you just haven't met the right people. Okay. So all these people that's been th here 30 years, they ain't meet the right people either. They're not connected or not. Like, why are we still dealing with this shit with all of these so-called diasporans somewhere around that's been here all these years where's the protection where's the help where's the support where's the you know i mean this is where i said we need some don corleone shit type for real where i can go and sit at your feet and i can come and give you my problems and let you know what's what it is and you know put the little cotton balls in your cheek and be like okay you know i'll take care of it where's that motherfucker that's word is bond and he's taking care of the shit instead of all these milk toast sermon ass niggas got all these great speeches and then when we leave ain't nothing happening everything is still the fucking same where are these people that everybody keeps imagining is there they're imaginary friends these people are there needs to be protections for our sisters and our men if y'all listening, your sisters need you whether you're married to them or not. You remember that Jill Scott song, We Need You? We need y'all to, you don't have to be married to a sister to show support for her, check in on her, look out for her. I grew up in a time where people actually jumped in conversations, like especially when shit didn't look right. I'm not saying you got to jump in in every conversation or every situation, but right now we're in a point where sisters need protection and um honestly this shit hurt my feelings when i just got this information i need people to stop looking at diasporans all you people trolling my page and on my whatever looking at diasporans as money bags you need to go back to your community and have this discussion i met an obruni today and she said she had it harder than other most Ghanaians she's met i have even though i don't look like it i have and that's on God. I have. So y'all need to stop this bullshit of thinking that just because somebody was born in the U.S. that we're just rolling around in money, that we got a money tree out back and we can just go and pick money or we got a well, we can just go and get a bucket and scoop all the money up. Stop thinking that stupid shit. Like, honestly, where do you guys come up with these dumbass thoughts anyway? But on everything, I'm, I mean, honestly, I still feel like I'm at a loss for words. But sisters... Protect yourselves. Protect one another. I'm, I mean, this one hurts. This one hurts. Chris dying in just a few months ago. This shit hurts. Chris was murdered. Fuck that. This hurts. Like, seriously. 